This week on the Push Ball Lays podcast, we talk about what the hell we're meant to be doing between now and actually January on your business, your training, and your nutrition, and helping your clients. We also talk about the word of the year and what sides go with Thanksgiving dinner. Three, two, one. Yes, the Saudis have paid off Argentina. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to the Push Poor Legs podcast. With myself, Damik. And me, Tom Hall. What's going on, bro? Yeah, I can't believe that. I can't believe that Saudi Arabia beat Argentina and no money has changed hands in any way. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, yeah. I think Sa- oh, Saudi Arabia, the, the lowest ranked World Cup team. Probably. That was the longest odds of any group game. Yeah, um, for them to beat or mm. Argentina not like to win, so for them to win, an interesting one. They're ranked fifty first. Yeah, fifty first. Are they the lowest? Qatar, Qatar are fiftieth. <laughs> yeah, so they're just the worst. Um, but I think obviously Saudi Arabia qualified. Qatar didn't qualify. They're just um, they're just there, aren't they? They're just there, aren't they? Um, oh my, hang on, I can't be the Romania can't be the worst team. They are, you know. Adrian Mutu. What? No, they can't about? be the worst team. It's just, it's just. <laughs> but there's only, they've only. Look, I'm only looking at world ranking, men's ranking. There we go. Let's find this men's ranking. I'm on the FIFA website. It's probably, probably corrupt just being on it, aren't I? Um, <laughs> I watched that the other day as well. By the way, I watched the um, FIFA Uncovered. Mate, it's shocking. It is shocking. How bad? Today I feel Qatari. Oh, Today it's just mental. I feel like an immigrant. That guy, yeah. oh my god! I oh, was like, I was, I was up early on like Saturday, and I was like, I just had the news on whilst I was having like my coffee. And I was like, what am I watching? Like that was like being talked yeah. about. I was like, I don't understand. And then he was, but the 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 uh, outlandish. Obviously, he's been paid a fair amount of money. Where the Qataris have just gone, you can yeah. you can say what we want you to say now, please. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, and it, like, it, it is it bad. madness. So he he knows about um, obviously. Uh, lack of women's rights because he's got four daughters. So his daughters obviously have no rights in her household. Uh, he knows what it's like to be disabled because he had ginger hair and freckles when he was younger in Italy. <laughs> mm, <laughs> hey, it's... Daniel's got a bit of a ginger beard, so he is constantly bullied. So you know, know exactly what it's like to be disadvantaged and yeah, all yeah. that kind of stuff. I, I just find I just find the whole thing a little bit. Uh, obviously, it's been brought to the fore with everything that's going on with, with Qatar, right? There's no doubt about that. But I watched the FIFA Uncovered and you it just made, you, you just makes you realise. And again, you'd have to be stupid to realise it's not corrupt. I think any big organisation like that, where there's bidding processes involved and all that sort of stuff, you'd be, that, you'd be stupid to think it wasn't. But, uh... Like it's going to be, right? But... It was the depth of it, and it was the it was just the blatant. There's no, they don't give a shit. Like getting caught, or whatever. They were just above the law, and it, it it's sad. It's sad to see it. Um, with the way, and again, like with the way that they did Russia then Qatar on the same thing, and they were just. If you haven't watched it yet, watch it on Netflix. It's it's, it's not. I say eye opening because it kind of like I'm not stupid enough to know that that's what happened. It's obvious, but it the, it was it was made you realize how far back it's gone. It went very very far back, and and how how all these people got very very rich, and like not being funny, but why is someone who's a president of FIFA like rich? Like again, in 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 monetary terms, I wouldn't expect them to be a multi millionaire. I wouldn't expect it. Like and again, like this whole thing of that, like they they serve all these terms and they serve longer than they should have done, and it's because they all get voted in by their mates because they're all paying them more money, and it's, it's all so like funny. changing hands. It's just a bit like oh. really like. There's not enough football people involved, in my opinion, in the whole. Yeah, in the whole then obviously Michel Platini got in, and then he was just as bad as all the others. Then he, so. <laughs> then he was like, "Oh, um, how much do I get paid?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but no, just look at yeah. So Saudi Arabia are the lowest ranked team in it. But do you know who the lowest ranked team are in the world, Tom? And I just want to read out some people that are close to it, just to give you an idea: Aruba, Bahamas, Somalia. I thought you were going to go like literally just geographical then. I was like, Aruba, Bahamas are quite close to each other, but Somalia yeah. is not as close. Yemen. Not as close to those. Yemen. Yemen is, 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 is down there. South Sudan, separate to Sudan, obviously. Um, yeah, it, but it's a different country. Know, so yeah, I don't know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah no, that's what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> Chad. So, yeah. Chad. So based on all those names, who do you like, think is the lowest? Uh, Nauru. Have they got a football team? 
No, it's one that but, you'll have heard of, which is why I was surprised when I saw the name there. Gibraltar. No, they're close. 204th Ooh. they are, Tom. Uh, this team is 211th. That's the number. Ooh, it's not bad, is it? Um, I San think Marino. they get... San Marino's correct. There I think <laughs> I think they get unfairly put at the bottom because they're in Europe. Yeah, because they have to play you know, hard. Because they play against European teams. Whereas you read some of these teams, right? If I go back to number 100 and... I mean, 113, Kazakhstan, 113th out of 211, right? Yeah, but did you just think of the, the pool of people Kazakhstan have? There's loads of yeah, people I in get, Kazakhstan. I, okay. There's well, got to be some of them. That are okay, 124th, the Malawi. I wouldn't have expected Malawi to be up there. As a, as a country here, I'm not even ashamed to say I've never <laughs> even heard of, right? <laughs> Comoros. Comoros? Comoros, yeah, yeah. Comoros is never in heard Africa. of Comoros. East yeah, Africa. Africa. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's got a population of eight hundred eighty-eight thousand people. Lovely. Good. It's not a lot, and they well, are one hundred twenty ninth. Manchester, isn't it? That's, that's the Manchester. One hundred twenty ninth in the world. Yeah, they're good. Good players. Comoros. <laughs> you never like, signed above... a Com Comorosian. Comoros yeah, no, no, I haven't. Comoros from. Uh, they're above yeah. like they're above Lithuania. Again, you'd think like Lithuania. They played like good European teams. That's what I find odd about it. Is it's, again, it's there doesn't seem to be any sort of like waiting for like what what part Moldova 174. Like I feel like they play harder teams. Do you know? I don't know. Maybe I'm being a bit um, a bit. Uh, oh. What's the word? Um. Anyway, yeah. Against, I feel I feel yeah, like we're gonna. I feel like the obviously we'll we'll cover it for one minute. Yes, all the Qatar stuff is uh, interesting, and there's two sides for. I don't know stories and yeah the, the the one thing obviously i said to dan before i was like there are eight other teams in the world cup that also have homosexuality that is against the law interesting mm. we should probably shine a light on them as well it's only obviously because qatar are hosting and there's other rights and stuff like that and blah 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 blah, blah, blah. i feel I, like it's yeah i i feel like I, i'm all yeah. i'm already tired of it already tired of it it's been oh, two that's... days I'm I'm the thing I'm tired of, and I nearly posted on Instagram, but I didn't because I didn't want it to come across wrong. And I think on a podcast I have more chance to to explain my my view of it all and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But I just hope that all the people that are outraged at the human rights and all this sort of stuff and all this sort of stuff aren't or don't own any clothing from any countries or sorry, any any um, brands that have been been shown to be violating human rights when they make their clothes. You know, like slave labor, child labor, all this sort of stuff. Like, I, it just annoys me when people get on their high horse and they don't understand what maybe they've contributed to in their lifetime to to this similar thing. Like, yeah. the gay rights thing is completely different. Like you said, there's eight other countries there and all, you know, it's, it's a religious issue, that is. That's uh, that's deeply rooted in religion, which is, again, not easy to just go, oh, by the way, and did you know? We can, just change we can be, on, like, I think just from a perspective of, like, there are other countries. So I think it, I was saying, like, Ireland, it was, like, 30, 35 years ago, it was illegal to be gay there as well. So it's a, it's a, it's definitely a generational thing. And the people who are uh, like from Qatar and Dubai, the Emiratis are probably of our age group now. Obviously, it's very hierarchical society, isn't it? It's like very much do as what you're told by your elders, blah, 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 blah. Once those people start to filter away, the possibilities of the more liberal minded people of such as our age group, maybe they start changing things. So we we could be 30 years away from it or probably less from changing certain ideas. And they've already, they already changed some of the laws based off what's happening now with the human rights stuff. But that needs yeah. to happen across the globe, not just Qatar. <laughs> how many, yeah, did you know how it's... many people are Qatari in Qatar? Hardly any. 12%. Yeah, hardly any. It'll, it won't be a lot. And yeah. you know, it's similar to here in Dubai, to be honest. It's not like, you know, um, but yeah. So anyway, this is what really got me is like, I, I just went on Google and I was just like top fashion brands have been faced with legal challenges over, you know, workers' rights and stuff. Boohoo, Forever 21, Gap, H&M, River Island. Like, right. not being I'm funny, but... two of those. Yeah, yeah and, it's, and look, it, but I, I just think it's one of those things It was things Boohoo where... and Forever 21, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the name um, even even Nike. To be fair, I think looking at this, even Nike. So you know, we're all we're all probably you know, and I I just think it's one of those things where I think it's easier to, to virtue signal and jump on it, and 
and talk about it without actually understanding it's a world issue. Like it's not just Qatar, like, and it has been brought to the front, to the fore with all that sort of stuff. But as we discussed before we came on as well, like literally the day before the Qatar World Cup started, there was that shooting in a gay club in America. And America is one of the worst countries for, oh, again, they've crazy. just, you know, they, they've just banned abortions, right? It's like, or they're yeah, getting close like, to, I can't remember what the, what the rule is. It's no, called certain it's states, in, it's in certain, it's states. In cer- certain states have yeah outlawed it. Like, and like, obviously, so... then then like uh, there's certain companies who have gone. We will pay for this person if you. We will pay you to go to the, another state to go get it done. For example, yeah. blah 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 blah. Gone holiday, kind of isn't it? Gone holiday. Like, yeah, like like like... you know, I think I think it's one of those where I think the Western world. I find it very, and maybe I feel a bit more strongly since moving here. And I feel like they're very quick to want to impose their view of the world on other people yeah. without looking at themselves first. Because my other point to this was like, it ain't like the UK is some sort of utopia. Let's not pretend that it's this glorious place and people aren't going to food banks and there's not more homeless people. And, you know, there's all that sort of stuff going on. It's a bit of a, I just sometimes find it a little bit like, like, unless you are you know, fucking Switzerland or somewhere like that looks like a, is a utopia, <laughs> like, or, or it's made out to be a little bit more like one or Sweden, then, then yeah, maybe you can, you can argue the, the case a bit more, but it's kind of like people in glass houses a little bit, I feel with it. And I'm not mm. saying that, you know, then I you think look at like... one of the best places to be, to be homosexual, but then you look at, again, America, it's still not a great place. I've got friends who are gay yeah. and they live there and it's not exactly the best place to, to be from that point of view. So it, it, it is something obviously we have to stick up for, but I do feel like, it's been blown out of proportion considering these I think people, it's like, just a case of like because obviously we'll look at back at our, our history say and we have the, the same rules and regulations that have in place possibly in certain countries were here but say 100 years ago that's the mm. issue it's just like all right have we evolved and perhaps they haven't or that's the case of what's happening there so it's, it's just mm. it's that kind of stuff and it's just like it's trying to be as best as you can possibly be and we're far from it um, but but we'll, we'll defend the British history and say obviously the issue was that uh, most most of the British were behind the slave trade. Just put that out there. Even though we it was always illegal in Britain because we had the biggest kind of fleet in kind of moving around the world, we were behind most of it. But then we went to the process of trying to abolish every everywhere as well. So it was like trying to undo our own shit or anything else. So. Yeah, obviously, yeah, obviously we it's... had the biggest empire in the world, which is, oh yeah, we're like, oh, now, now we're not so much. But yeah, yeah. anyway, I think that's ten, that's 10 minutes, Dan. That's enough on that topic. We're, it is enough on that yeah, topic. Yeah, yeah correct. Yeah. We'll move on. Yeah. We'll move on. What we really need to decide is, well, we've got a couple of topics, obviously. Um, So probably the title of this is actually, what do you need to do between uh, now and January? We'll talk about, I guess, fitness business. We'll talk get about fat. nutrition and Eat training. Loads loads we'll food, talk about all that fat. stuff. Um, and and But one of the big, well, and actually, uh, there was a question asked to me today, which uh, is relevant to right now, only this episode, to be honest. And then you can forget it next week, but you can regurgitate the same information next next year. So listen to that, this podcast, save it, and then set a reminder on your calendar to listen to it again. So you reiterate what it is. Um, that's just on Black Friday shit. But what is most important then is um, the public have to vote to decide on the Oxford word of the year for the first time. So that's happening. So I've got the words here. Um <laughs> So there's, uh, where have we got? So the previous, wow. So 2021 apparently was Vax. What does that mean? What does what mean? Vax. That was uh, the words of the year for the Oxford English Dictionary last year. Vax. Oh, yeah, like anti-vax, isn't it? Or vax. Is it? Is that what it's about? It must be. You think? Yeah. Last year's Australia's emergency coronavirus. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I didn't know there was, it was something like a play on Vex. Something like that. No. Oh, man, man's vexed. Man's not vexed. Is that what that would be or something? You you can tell I'm down with the kids. Um... <laughs> You're so down with the kids, man. <laughs> Could I have been more white, middle class, sipping an IPA there with my my, my craft gin? Um, okay, yeah. Uh... <laughs> I <laughs> I went to comprehensive school. It's fine. I went to state school. We're good. Um, Dan knows that you can my Essex accent comes out every now and again yeah. um, so what we got so you have until the options for 2022 are um, there's three apparently so there is metaverse I feel like Facebook are just going to pay that in oh, yeah. they want that 
Um, obviously, meta. Um, there is hashtag I stand with. That's not a word, so that, is it? That uh, recognizes the activism and division that has characterized this year. Um, it was a movement cause such as the war in Ukraine. The hashtag has 2.8 million views on TikTok. So only a few more than... That's not than, a lot. Only a few way. more than me and Dan, by the way. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, and the term goblin mode. Never heard Never of any of them. <laughs> Never heard right. of it. I mean, I guess it has to be metaverse because that's the only one I know. Well, no, the, I've never, I don't think I've ever used any of those words other than maybe metaverse once or twice. Use metaverse. We talked about it last, like two weeks ago, shortly. Yeah. Um, not in here, but in person. We were talking about yeah. the ridiculousness of real estate, weren't we? Um, <laughs> it's not real estate, it's fake estate, but yeah. Fake estate, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Goblin mode is a slang phrase dating back to 2009. Um, according to University Press, it is used to describe someone as being lazy, greedy, and self-indulgent, and in doing so, rejecting social norms. The phrase was rediscovered at the time when people came out of lockdowns all around the world could relate to its meaning. Um, yeah, okay. Apparently, Julia Fox was a link to it. Um, that's the woman that dated Kanye West after Kim Kardashian, I believe, no, or the old no rebound. Idea. I only knew that because I saw so like, uh, uh, a Facebook thing. <laughs> Baby, this is what I talk about with my clients. It's fun. Um, so yeah, what are we going for? Metaverse, hashtag I stand with, or goblin mode? I think metaverse because it's probably going to stick around longer than the others. That's going to stick around, isn't it? Goblin mode. I don't get why, but... Yeah. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, I'm glad we decided that. That was a hot topic. Good. I like some of the other ones. So... Um, Shock 2022 lockdown. Um, <laughs> surprised that wasn't in the word as they're just word of the year, it's not new words that are going in, right? No, Don't is that really 2020? Know. You mean 2020? Yeah, yeah, but you said 2022 yeah. first. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Climate emergency that's not a word. Toxic is 2018. These are obviously all words that were previous because, yeah, I can't imagine. Yeah, toxic probably would have been in it. Maybe they've got mm. like a, a different meaning to the word toxic. That wasn't when Britney Spears released that song, was it? No. Twenty eighteen predates that, Dan. Must must have been under like toxic masculinity or something. That's the only way. That's way I ever see it get used these days. Anyway, so it can't be that. <laughs> that is that is just and there's a picture of Dan next to it. So oh fun. yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, all right. Uh, we'll we'll discuss uh, Black Friday. Just a nice short, sharp one before we tell you what to fuck you do uh, before January, from now till January, as that's the whole topic. Mm. So Black Friday, I got asked this today by a coach, um, was should uh, they discount uh, or did they, should they do a deal for Black Friday? What's what's our thoughts, Daniel? If you have a product to sell, yes. If you have a service, you're selling no. No, no. Golden rules to go with Black Friday. Um, yeah. It's a straight, it is a straightforward as that, pretty much. Um, it is. The only thing that you can do with a service that I've seen work quite well is start now, pay nothing till January. But then, of course, the cost is then put into the whole thing where you do it in January kind of thing. So you could say to someone, right, you can start your PT sessions now and you can pay in January. Do you know? Because people don't have as much cash now maybe as they do in January. Yeah. You can do, say, five sessions. And then when they pay for them, they've got five left because you sell a block of 10 maybe or I don't know, whatever. There's a bit of a risk involved there with obviously like they may do the five and then not come back and not pay you. Like you do run a risk with that. But that's the only thing that I've seen work with a service over this time period. Um, or if you have a service, you add a bolt on to it, like not double the amount of sessions, but like a free Fitbit to help track your steps alongside your service or something like that. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, yeah. Which so instead do. of yeah, I, I would say that. Like in terms of a service, perhaps, yeah. I'd say keep it the same price, but you add something in to get them in more than anything else. So it's slightly better value. Um, but then you have to be, just be wary that the people already in your stable probably are like, uh, did you get my free bit? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Where's my fucking free bit? But so yeah, it's an interesting one. So, but I just say with that, they shouldn't be even asking with it. I think your clients that are in your building should get fairly regular kind of stuff from the coach anyway, in terms of just gifting, thank, saying thank you for being with me, blah, 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 that kind of shit. So yeah. Um, I have a little automation that goes out every, I think, like three or six months or something like that. Um, 
to go stock up on a, as much my protein shit as possible. Um, but yeah, that's about right. So just keep them, keep them vaguely interested in, in like they're thinking of them uh, mm. every now and again. So it's always a good idea because uh, they'll be like, oh, thank you. Uh, and it's fairly, it's fun. So I've got a discount code at my protein as well. It's fine. It's fine. Then. Easy for uh, you, isn't I, it? Easy, easy. But actually, I don't make any money off that discount code. They have to use the fucking link. And I'm like, I don't care about that. <laughs> Nominal. I'm not pushing. Push my codes. As you can see, uh, my code is nowhere on my Instagram. And I get frequently told off about it. Uh, and I'm like, does it matter? Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, my like, 2,000 2, odd followers are really on all my clients. So they might be frequent purchases, but they're purchasing loads. So it's fine. All right. Mm. Um, yeah, so we're just going to discuss what to do with, I guess, business, nutrition, training, I guess they're the topics, um, probably nothing else. We're not going to talk about hairstyles that are going in and out of fashion from here till January. So yeah. No, we're not. Are we? we haven't got <laughs> no, no experience with that, mate. But um, right, yeah, look, certainly in terms of like say business stuff, you can, you can do Black Friday stuff on your products. Um, you know, and, and I think the other thing oh, I've seen work well is like my prices are going up in January. You can get it at the current price now. That's mm -hmm. another thing to do with that. So um, one sort of thing I've seen work quite well. Um, I think Suck's done that before with his stuff. Um, then doesn't change or you anything. Can, yeah, or yeah. Or you can do the whole like get in now and then, you know, you'll get, a, a you know, again, a prize or a bonus in January. There's this thing coming or I'm going to start this. And it's an additional thing for coaches. So I'm going to add it on. Just, Whatever, there's those different kind of ways you can you can add it on, but like I said, just don't discount your um, your services and you'll be absolutely fine. No, yeah. And then when we say product, we mean like so. For example, I have the combine, you have Blitz, which is more of a product based thing. It's kind mm -hmm. of it runs itself to a certain extent. It needs minimal contact from us, mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of a it can be a PDF. It can be fucking a meal plan. It can be like a program, whatever. It could be a, a series of videos that you've done. Um, that kind of stuff, a product mm -hmm. it's like packaged off you go and your kind of client can crack on with and do it. Right. So it just is minimal, probably has some level of automation and you don't need to stress about it. Um, yeah, hopefully. The other thing not... with it as well is, is to make sure that when you're selling this stuff that you do it through email, um, I think a lot of people are going to just try and sell on Instagram, um, which will be a noisy place over the next sort of four or five days with people talking about their own Black Friday stuff. So again, a bit late in the day now, obviously, with it being Wednesday, but um, try and get people onto your email list before then. Say the only place you can get my Black Friday deals is going to be my email list, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then when you sell to them on email, they, you know they're going to get the emails because it's not algorithm based. You know they're going to get them. If they open them, you can send them four times. On Black Friday, you can send four emails if you wanted to, whereas there's no guarantee they're going to see any of your links or any of your posts. Um, they're going to scroll on by potentially. So yeah. definitely try and get you onto, onto an email list to, to do that. And then with that as well, just remember that um, like it's important to drive people to an email list for that reason, but you can also use the Black Friday discounts as almost a bit of a lead magnet to your email list to say, come on, remember my email list because I'll, that's the only place you can get my discounts. But also there's some stat as well, like, I can't remember what it is now. Mike uses it occasionally, but people are more prone to be sold to on email. Like people sign up to hear more from emails to be sold to. Like that's where they go to find deals. People aren't necessarily following someone on Instagram to be sold to. Um, social media isn't a place where people buy as much as they do in email. People spend a lot of money on email. Um, so again, there's that benefit there. Psychologically, it's a place that more people will spend money. So think about that as well and think about the reasons for having an email list, which again, I talk about extensively. People still ignore me. Because they don't think they need email list, but well. Um, yeah, that's all I was saying. Mm. Fair enough. All right. Um, cool. Yeah. Email list is uh yeah, I I resent I literally just resent an email I sent out yesterday. <laughs> Cause obviously you can on certain platforms you can go resend to the people who didn't open it. Correct. It goes ding 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 subject line. Yeah. Try a different subject line, a bit more of a, of a like clickbaity one, a bit more whatever. Um, you can do all that sort of stuff, and yeah, it just makes loads more sense. And if you need a hand with that, just let me know because it's kind of what I do. Um, it's kind of useful, very handy. Um, if you just write on Instagram, you will um, miss out on a lot, basically. Um, that's what you need to do, Black Friday, simple as that. Um, and 
Yeah, just show it down people's throats a little bit. Don't. I think with that as well, P- PTs and coaches are very bad at selling. They think that if they posted about it once, that everyone's going to have seen it. And oh, I didn't buy it. Oh, it's like no, you need to talk about it quite a lot. Um, so again, don't rely on just one post or one email. Like it needs to be done more regularly than that. <laughs> that. Yeah, I mean, I've spouted the uh, the whole what you said before about yeah, maybe a forty five day fucking lead up to selling something um, mm-hmm. to notice actual change and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So maybe you start advertising for fucking January now. <laughs> maybe. Well, the people yeah. that sign up in January, by the way, are absorbing your content now. They're making a decision yeah. over the next few weeks in the in, in their in their subconscious. The amount of coaches that like, oh, I never went posting now between now and I just wait till January. It's like, no, nah, they're they are judging you now. <clears throat> they're they're, yes. they're they're understanding that you know their pain points. They're seeing that you understand that you know you're posting your social proof. They made their decision. They're just not acting on it because it's not the right time for them. So people will sign hopefully. Up yeah, hopefully I'm going to be, be posting kind of, all right, you've missed the boat on this Black Friday combine, but guess what's happening in January? You can sign up then. Absolutely. Um, there'll be another one more than likely, but yeah, we're going to keep that going um, more than anything else. So I'm sure, and you've already, yeah, you're, you're, the Black Friday is already for the January Blitz, right? So yeah. if that's the case. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. All right. So in terms of, yeah, in terms of business, I guess we can talk about that then uh, in terms of what we should be posting, what business stuff they should be doing, um, maybe what you should be doing with your clients, blah, 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 from now until January. And that is exactly that. You could be priming. You're still kind of doing the same thing, but maybe you're priming for a big, traditionally, it's more of a selling kind of thing time in January. And it's probably usually a leaner time in December, but I still think people are gonna, people will gradually sign up on, in December. Especially for yeah, just help. The best type of clients will the best type of clients because yeah. they're the ones that aren't waiting for a specific time point or whatever. So you do get a lot of um, good clients sign up. In I had some of my best clients sign up. I remember she signed up like December twenty first, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, stayed with me for like three years. We did a couple of photo shoots and stuff like that. Um, and again, it, it, it's you have to keep turning up. Like I don't, I don't like this mentality of oh well, nothing's coming in now between now and then, so I might as well suck it off. Yeah, the likelihood is is decreased. Of course it is, but. If you then don't put out posts, you don't put out CTAs, well, then you kind of like self-fulfilling prophecy. Well, yeah, you're going to get no one come through. Um, so there's there's that. But also, like I said, people are making their decisions now um, on who they like and who they don't like. So you have to keep turning up. It's good a time to try out different content and to try things out because you've got plenty of time between now and January when you maybe need to up it, up your game a little bit more, whatever. Um, so there's that kind of style of thing to think about. And then again, with clients, it's, it's, it's keeping them on track and making sure they don't obviously go too crazy at Christmas, but you know, talking to them about next year's goals, talking about where they want to be next year in terms of strength, performance, nutrition, whatever it might be, holidays they may have, and, and you know, planning things out ahead of time so that you're aware of, of their wants and needs when it comes to this stuff. Don't go into the new year and they go, right, what are we doing this year? Then you go, well, I don't know, really. What do you fancy? Like that's not a great way to start the year. You should be knowing this well ahead of time. Um, so they can recharge over Christmas and get ready to go kind of thing. Because naturally it is a time where people do recharge, take time off. There's nothing wrong with that. I think that's probably why people assume they're going to less, less, you know, people sign up. But um, like I said, it is an important time for your current clients to do the same thing. Yeah. So you need to make sure they're set up for that and whether you've got all the new training plans done. So I often do it with my clients. I try and get all my training plans written up before the Christmas break, before I break up for Christmas so that, after Christmas is done, I go, right, if they're people that need a new plan, I'm like, it's ready to go, it's all good. You kind of enjoy Christmas knowing your work's kind of done because you planned ahead and you can send it through to them and say, look, this is what we're going to start in January and can get them excited for it. Yeah. I've got to admit, sometimes I'm a little bit, um, I guess, because I'm very much more training focus, my programs have a little bit more flexibility, maybe, than uh, maybe that Daniel writes. So I tend to only write in like four week blocks. I know you write in 12, don't you? Do you do 12? Uh, six, two six week blocks that are repeated usually. Um, again, if, if they're feeling okay on them so that they have to then sort of beat the first cycle and the second cycle, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just a case of, I guess it's, it's just a case of goal orientation and like programming for comps and shit like that. I have to be a little bit more flexible in terms of what's happening. So I can like shit the bed and be like, fuck that isn't up there um sometimes it happens okay even i'm whiteboarded and have my dates and on stridus and all that kind of shit so um Mm. just has to on the people who are in off season right now or building so say cricketers fucking some of the combat guys are in there they're they're not so much footballers are annoying at the moment um but they're they're much oh what are we working towards i'm like staying fit 
um, <laughs> playing football. Yeah. <laughs> um, that makes sense. yeah. But I think the people who are kind of in an off season phase should be should be packing on muscle, should be packing on strength. Um, if I'm brutally, yeah. brutally honest right now, is the time to do that when they haven't got to recover for any competitions. They haven't got to recover for anything else. They shouldn't have anything else that's in the way. So it's, the chances are like, um, so I got probably three guys, three guys, yeah, that are on like triphasic, like harsh strength phase. I think I, t- I talked about it the other day, but I put another lad on it. And that's like a, that's a heavy training phase. And it has to be people who I actually trust to be able to fucking do it. Um, but yeah, people should be strength training right now. 100%. Um, I think you can still obviously look at movement quality, but don't just be like, oh, I'm strength phasing, therefore everything is strength in every single day. I'd be like two days would be um, two days in terms of strength orientation days, definitely. Um, and then you map out the other days as as you wish. It's just like focuses. Mm-hmm. I talked about it on one of my posts. It's like, it's just got to be focus. It's got to be a focus, not a complete get rid of all that shit um so that would be the case of my clients a lot of them yeah are on that kind of thing and then a a bunch of them are on kind of movement um like the footballers and stuff and movement maintenance more than anything else so their heavy days are as close to the performance days so their match days as possible um post not before obviously um Mm. so they but yeah, some of them have it. Some of them will do it on the day after. Some do it on day plus one. So it's normally um, match day plus one is the case. Doing they do their heavy day and then they'll taper off throughout the week. Uh, get the performance. So go power, probably like a volume based movement quality session day. Um, and then most likely, back, I've got a lot actually. The back end of November are all on testing weeks. Um, just so we know what's going on. Because they probably got four good weeks before they hit Christmas and then that week's shit. So I can be like, right, testing in terms of what they're doing, combine e-based things. Um, basically, like more specific combines if you're a, a one-to-one client. So we pick out certain different things that we need testing. Um, and then if you're on just on a general combine, you definitely have one at the end of November. And then you have four weeks of solid training before shit hits the fan and you take an auto deload because that is the one, that is the, enigma of the week of christmas during new year um because that's gonna be shit it mm-hmm. always is for everybody so you, yeah. you'll feel lethargic you there's lots of social events happening you're traveling around like there's not much point i'm i might even nine times out of ten give a skeleton sessions to people and go go enjoy yourself like you don't have to train properly this week like it's not gonna kill you you're not gonna lose all your gains you're going to have essentially an auto deload, but kind of off the cuff. Go do some bro sessions. Go, yeah, not having to put as much intent into shit. So just train arms every single day. And then we'll get back onto it in January. So, mm. yeah, that will be my advice um, at the moment. Unless you're uh, one of my high rocks athletes. And then, uh, unfortunately, um, their competition is in February. So they've got shit tons of uh, cardio and conditioning to do. In December, burpees. there's so many burpees, <laughs> and uh, they're all doing half high rocks at the moment this month. So they have to do like a full high rocks pretty much every week, but split into two sessions. And uh, yeah, it, does, it, it looks horrible. It looks horrible. And then it's just it's like, not fun, is it? and then it's just like running basically until the rest of it. It's just got to get the 5k times down pretty much 10k really. But yeah, it's gross, gross. But if you want to do that, then I'll map it out for you. It's actually fun. I still will write a high rocks based combine. I've got to do that, like combine high rocks, ten weeks out, something like that. I know. Be easy, just mm. run, lots of cardio. <laughs> yeah, no power needed, just, just fucking <laughs> pure endurance, mate. That one. Oh, uh, what's happened nutritionally, Daniel? Yeah, like it's again, like people will use it as an excuse to do all this sort of shit, but but the reality is. It's not too, it's not too much. Like it's not like how many times do people do this on like the 27th of December? Oh, I just want a bit of veg. I'm a bit full. Like a lot of people say that, right? And it's like, okay. So then you start thinking, okay, it's just two days really. And, you know, I appreciate some people have different days where they kind of go, oh, you know, I've seen my other family on the 28th and there's gonna be a big, big dinner and all this sort of stuff. 
But I always feel like when you're eating large amounts of food, it's also easier to forego certain meals and like skip a breakfast or skip a lunch yeah. and, you know, all those sorts of things. I say to people, mm-hmm. enjoy those bigger meals, but don't snack in between them. That's the thing that kills people is a snack in. It's like the chocolates in between all this sort of stuff, right? So with my clients, I sort of tend to say, look, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, do whatever the fuck you want, go fucking mad. Yeah. I then have like three or four higher days over that sort of like 10 day period where no one knows what fucking day it is. Um, you have like four high days. And then around it, I kind of say, look, if you can have five days, uh, it wasn't the maths on that, another four days where you're kind of on, you know, lowish calories, like near maintenance calories, and you're fairly active and you still train, you're not going to gain body fat over that time period, uh, uh, any substantial amount. It's all going to get burnt off just from increased need, increased, you know, expenditure. Your body's going to want to burn those calories off. And that's the 10 days over Christmas that I kind of look at. And and the the build up, excuse me, they've got hiccups. The build up to Christmas. I think that the more coaches build up that time and worry about it and have to make strategies, the more your clients will take the piss with it. It's just normal weeks. Like, yes, they may go out for some drinks for Christmas do. They may go out. Well, yeah, they go out for drinks anyway on a weekend or another work do or another yeah. work do. You just have to manage your expectations and go, well, Treat it like any other normal day. Like you still have to eat your protein and your veggies and the meals before that. You can still go out and have a good time. Like, and I think what happens a lot of the time is you get a lot of coaches that just kind of like don't treat that time period as normal time. Look, you just need a couple more higher days. Deal with it. Work around it. It's not a huge problem. Um, don't be part of like I said the problem that 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 I suppose exacerbates it. You can still work around it. You can still get people to maintain their good habits. You know, not all of, a, all of a sudden over December, not going to eat protein at breakfast. Oh, fuck it. I might as well just have beer. It's like, they're not going to. They're having a few nights out extra. Like, that's it. Help them manage the situation. Help them come up with strategies to work around it. And look, if you can get your client, um, like I said, first two weeks of December, you can still lose weight. No problem. If you can then get your client to come out the last two weeks of December into the new year, and they're the same weight, you know, in the first week of January as they were in the sort of third week of December, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Like, that's what you. That's what you're hoping for here. Problem is, the reason people mess up so much is that they go into the 1st of December or even now thinking, fuck it, it's Christmas. I'm going to get the Christmas hot chocolate, the Christmas sandwich. You know, they get all the chocolates at work and they just see it as a free-for-all for six weeks. It's like, yeah, if you do that for six weeks, you will gain five kilos. Of course you will. That's not what it is. The reality of that isn't 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 the case. It's just that that's what people start doing and they start switching off with that. Um, and your current clients won't. If they're motivated, the same results, they, you know, you're coaching them well, they won't do that because it's not worth it. They know how hard they have to work to lose five, six kilos. I'm not going to put it all on unnecessarily when they still want to be able to enjoy Christmas later on down the line. So you can treat it as any other normal time of the year. Again, allows, if someone says, oh, I really want one of those Christmas hot chocolates, go, we'll have one then. If you don't, if you say to them, don't have it or ignore it, they're going to, it's right. going to build up in their head to be more and more and more. <laughs> they're going to want one and they're going to go fucking mental. Just say, yeah, it's just a fucking hot chocolate. Have it. Like, fit it into your car. There's no problem. Have it on a high day. Cool. Sweet. Crack on. Don't then the next day have a box of celebrations to yourself. Like, <laughs> um, Why not? Yeah. It's just the same as any other time of year. There's always there's always a time of year. It's, it's not that it's Easter. If it's not that it's barbecues. If it's not that it's you know it's New Year. It's just like, there's so many things. Oh, it's my birthday. It's my anniversary. It's my kids' birthday. Yeah. Like, there's always things. It's the same things. It's just managing it. It's just because Christmas. So, um, yeah, that'd be my my tuppence worth. Is um, I had uh, I had an eggnog latte on the weekend. Just never got eggnog ever. But yeah, eggnog latte. Tasty. Good is it? Good, it's a good one. Um, it's far better than the uh, gingerbread latte. Is People... eggnog? Is eggnog sort of like um? What is eggnog? That? Yeah, what is it? What flavor like is it? Is it kind of like that? It's good. I'm trying to think of what it is. I don't even know what I'm eggnog. thinking of. Cardamom kind of taste almost. Cardamony, milky. It's known mm. as a milk punch. <clears throat> I just don't like the food. <laughs> It's been like egg in it. Made from egg. milk, cream, sugar, egg yolks, and whipped egg whites. So it's just like a cake in a cup. So, <laughs> yeah, it's got. It's sometimes got like cinnamon in it. Um, yeah, it's normally. Yeah, I don't know why I butter. imagined it would have cinnamon in it. Yeah, like kind of like yeah, something like that in it. Um, yeah, nutmeg. That's what I was thinking of. Not fucking cardamom. Nutmeg. nutmeg. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not sure it how is. I feel about it. It's basically custard, right? Isn't it? Yeah, Milk, cream, true. sugar, egg yolks. Yeah, yeah it it's is. custard. It is. it is good. It is good. I like it. See, now, if they said custard, People I can get more with drinking custard. <laughs> it's because it's got egg the word egg sounds in it. weird. Like, yeah, oh. it does sound weird. 
But I mean, some of them have bourbon. But don't I, think they? Bourbon bourbon, I think traditional like eggnog has bourbon in it. Yeah, correct. See, if it's they cool. said custard drink, I'd get on board with that. Custard and babies or something. I'd be like, yeah, I'll try that. Eggnog, no. no. no oh, mate, that. I had uh, that ice cream I posted on Saturday night. Bill Monte ice cream. Oh, my God. If anybody's in Soho, go to Bill Monte and thank me later. Oh, it was so good. I had, what did I have? Um, some like special thing, white chocolate and something else. Mm-hmm. It was so good. It was, yeah, it was possibly putting it out there, the best ice cream I've ever had in London. I've had a lot of ice cream in London. Wow. Um, that is a bold statement. It's a bold statement. And I like dessert places, are, I, I feel like need to be better in general. Mm-hmm. Um, which I understand. I'm always quite confused that dessert places close quite early, but then I'm like, they're normally for kids, aren't they? Um, so that mm. is probably why. Whereas I'm going, oh, I don't want that. I don't fancy any of the desserts at the restaurant. Therefore, I'm going to go to a dessert place afterwards. Um, that's what my think of a dessert place is. But if that was the case of most dessert places, would go out of business very quickly. Um, mm. It is better than Milk Train. We should take Dan to Milk Train and get him a nice big. Uh, Ice cream with what's it's got like uh, candy floss on it. Yeah. So what is it? Kind of candy I said, floss. I'll tell you one thing I do miss, by the way, just on that about being here at this time of year, is the severe lack of cinnamon and nutmeg based products. Because like, <laughs> they can't get you away can, from you can, all that. You stuff can get here, you right? can get them yeah. all the time here. Like anyway, if you really wanted to find them, but it's more a case of like you know at Christmas I'm always like oh yeah like that's what I fancy like yeah. it's colder and you have those tastes like, and smells and I'm stuff. Gonna... I'm going to walk home and then I have, yeah, this like, yeah, ridiculous hot chocolate drink of, you just be like, oh, it's nice. But right, I just sent you, um, this is a, a debate um, I had this week because obviously it's Thanksgiving, every, all our American listeners, all four of you. Um, and mm, what's going on here? I will be, I will be uh, doing Thanksgiving. So there'll be a lot of stuff on uh, Saturday is when I'm doing it because... I'm not American and we all have jobs. So <laughs> there'll be eight or nine of us on Saturday um, celebrating Thanksgiving. Basically, it's just an excuse to get together and just, yeah. just have some fun. So obviously, I'm I'm cooking, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, mm. all right. Top three Thanksgiving sides. So I'm just in the perspective of all these sides. I am doing the sweet potato casserole. Uh, the mashed potatoes, the green bean casserole, roasted Brussels sprouts, but I'm putting bacon lardons in it, um, cranberry sauce, honey glazed carrots, uh, and cream corn. Those are the sides I'm designating for my meal. Um, I thought like there's another one, but these are all the sides that apparently are pretty traditional for Thanksgiving. What are you going to go? Top three. So we've got the sweet potato casserole, just an FYI, is just, it's yams really, but sweet potato mixed with maple syrup like mashed up so it's mashed up sweet potato mixed with maple syrup with uh marshmallows on top and then they're roasted it is fucking incredible it's so nice you're like that is too sweet it is good mate you it is yeah. good the mashed potatoes that would be nice with some turkey to be fair because you you know you know you have like cranberry sauce or something sweet yeah, with turkey yeah. anyway so i but get like, i get it probably good yeah the mashed potatoes traditional like uh um, smashed potato like with like creamy chives and blah 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 all that kind of shit and then like panko breadcrumb on top of it so that, mm. that makes it good um cornbread green bean casserole is green beans in like uh mushroom soup and with uh crispy onions on top and then you put that in the oven that is it is really good so people are like mm. what that's it does taste nice uh roasted brussels sprouts with like bacon is is awesome anyway stuffing it's stuffing cranberry sauce mac and cheese underwhelming fucking thing in the world uh cream corn is literally that it's like heavy cream milk cheese all whipped together with fucking corn it is so good uh buttered biscuits is kind of like you have you had biscuits before did you have yeah. it when you were in the states yeah but yeah. biscuits like, and it, they're like kind of like savory scones kind of thing right they're kind of kind like of scony, um, dumplings kind of aren't they a bit like dumpling, dumpling kind of like kind of texture dumpling gone kind of mixed thing like like yeah dry kind of texture um and then roasted butternut squash never seen that on there and then honey glazed carrots what are you going top three dan come on I'm gonna i I'm gonna be really controversial uh-huh. here. Probably. I don't know if it's because I am a little bit older now with Christmas dinners and stuff. <laughs> I actually think that a Thanksgiving sounds better than a Christmas dinner. It and is. I've never <laughs> and I've never had one. I've never had one. I've never Mate, had get one. Get yourself over Saturday. I'm hoping uh... I'm hoping that my American <laughs> client will one day make it for me. But anyway. Um or my my old American client, one of my friends. Um 
Based on that, I mean, I want to try it all, obviously. Well, no, actually, that's a lie. Mac and cheese can get in the city. That's fucking dog shit. <laughs> um, roasted butternut squash, not a huge but. The thing, I'll tell you the four I'm, I'm, I'm mixed between is a sweet potato casserole because I'm intrigued. Stuffing because stuffing is incredible. Yeah. The buttered biscuits just because I love a bit of bread and butter and, yeah, just amazing. And then the honey glazed carrots. And then now you say it, the green bean casserole sounds good. So they're the five that I'd be going between. Cream corn, not as fussed. <laughs> Cranberry sauce, not bothered. So now I've got to think about this logically. I've got to have a vegetable in there. So I'm going to go with green bean casserole over honey glazed carrots because I've not had that. I've had glazed carrots before. I think the, the crispy onions have sold it to me, but the mushroom soup has sold it to me. That's that. I then believe the sweet potato casserole and stuffing, kind of like starchy kind of base thing. I think I'd go, because again, I haven't tried it, the sweet potato casserole. And I think that I would be able to get away with finding a buttered biscuit somewhere. So I'd have stuffing and I'd try and steal a buttered biscuit off someone else who picked that <laughs> aside. Um, I've always been fascinated by cornbread, but I've tried it before and I remember it was a bit underwhelming. Yeah. Um, it sounds I've better always, than it I like I like the idea of it and it looks great, but it's not, not yeah. all that. It's a bit Imagine dry. it's like polenta, right? It's like when you get a cake yeah. that's a polenta, you're like, oh, it's going to be, it's just the same as fucking yeah, any yeah. other cake, right? Um, Mashed potatoes, we have those. Roasted Brussels sprouts, we have those. Cream corn, meh. I'm, yeah, I'm, I've had it before. Mac it is shit. good, but yeah, it's like, yeah. Yeah, I think sweet potato casserole, stuffing, and green bean casserole, they're the ones I'm going for out of those. Yeah, um, yeah with turkey, obviously, isn't it? That's the main, right? Turkey, what else do they have as the main? Is, is there more stuff than that? No. Do they not have meatloaf? Do they not have any sort of meatloaf-based thing? I don't, I don't think so. But obviously the tradition is like the turkeys are just done better. So I'm brining Aren't it. Aren't they deep fried? Like, some of them I'm deep sure fried. Yeah, deep yeah. Deep fried. Deep that fried. is that's epic. A, that's scary as well. That's like uh, how big the fryer has got to fucking be, right? But, you, but I was talking to my client about it and he lived in LA for like 20, 25 years. And he was like, yeah, we've done, we've done deep fried bird. And it's like, it is yeah. incredible. It is tasty. But it's like, he was just like, yeah, you have to get like a massive just container of oil and then just put it over a flame and hope <laughs> it kind of like wow. that's how they did it um and then deep fry it it's insane i'll be brining mine in like uh wet brine like salted brine solution for like 24 hours before and um, then let's talk about desserts mate they do pumpkin pie right that's the main yeah dessert. so our, our pecan pie we'll, like we'll be having two those are the both the both the ones we'll have we'll have pecan pie and pumpkin pie yeah, yeah. See, I, I'm down for Thanksgiving being better than Christmas dinner. Hands down. <laughs> just based on that, because Christmas dinner puddings are shit. Christmas pudding is shit. Let's just put it out. Christmas there, pudding right? is, is terrible. Yeah, yeah. Awful. And like the fact you have like Christmas cake, you have to feed it. It's fucking people have already made their Christmas cakes and they've been feeding them for twelve Fuck weeks that. or whatever. Honestly, it's like, geez, why do you have to feed a cake? Fuck me. It's insane. Peach but, yeah. Melba pie is that another one? I don't know. Traditional. Either. Pumpkin, yeah, pumpkin and pecan are coming up as a pumpkin top two. Pecan, pecan pie is incredible. Pecan pie would get my vote out over, over that. And I imagine pumpkin pie has got cinnamon and all that stuff in it, so I, I can get on pumpkin board with that. Pumpkin pie's good. What's, yeah. um, let's, let's go, I'm, just, I'm Googling it now. I want to fucking try one. I might have to find <laughs> somewhere over here that does it, because there'll be somewhere over here that does it. Yeah. I'm not here, though, for it, am I? So that's a fucking waste of time. Uh, Thanksgiving appetizers. What are the, uh, oh, there, there's nothing There's nothing traditional. It's just whatever you fancy. About, isn't it? Yeah. It, I don't Not that they need it. it with all that. <laughs> yeah, mate, you don't need it. Like, you normally like cooking quite you a know few what? I'm going to say, I, I'm, I want to try that one, yeah. I actually want to really try an American Thanksgiving. It sounds miles better than a Christmas. Christmas it is dinner. good. Well, we do it every year. So, yeah, you're more than welcome. Fly over. It's a bit of an expensive meal to fly all the way here. Mate, but, can you yeah. save me some? On the, can I see you on Thursday? Just save me a, a serving and freeze it or something like that. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll be like, I've got yeah. one Dan plate. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, mate, we'll see, it we'll just, see whether it, 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 it holds on. Right. It will be good. You'll speak, I'm sure that'll be Instagrammed by everybody that's here anyway. So that'll be good. Brilliant. That's just what I need, isn't it? I think <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Any other business? Not from me, no. No, not from me. Mm-hmm. Obviously, last few days before you can sign up for, I'm assuming, Daniel's Blitz and my Combine. Um, yeah, yeah yep, I yep, think yep. both links are probably... To, um, you have to go to the bio on the Biceps Atlanta Coaching page, at Biceps Atlanta Coaching. Uh, the link is there to join the email list and you will get the email for 
to get bits for 77 quid, which is ridiculous considering full price last time was 177. Yeah. So, um, and yeah, just go to my go to my bio and it's the top one in my link tree. Um, yeah, and then by that, then you'll get pinged with an email of how to fucking do everything afterwards after I've taken your money. But yeah, it's, it's not much. 65 quid for 10 weeks of coaching. And uh, I'm literally cur- currently, because I'm checking out the competition, it's it's better than the competition. So that's right. Easy, isn't it? Easy, easy, easy. Money. easy money. Um, all good. All right, thanks for listening, guys. We'll catch you. See you later.